Hello Super Friends and welcome to DC TV Talk and in today's episode we'll be breaking down and reviewing Supergirl Season 4 Episode 6 otherwise entitled Call to Action and before you watch this review make sure you've seen this episode as it will be filled with spoilers. So it appears to be that Supergirl is slowly, ever so slowly, and gradually improving as this season is going on. Last episode I felt was not too bad, and this episode continues that trend. While the main story was not particularly as interesting as say it was last week, I feel like what really was going on in this episode was building a lot of characters, and I feel like it did that pretty well, and I'll go through that here. So first off, I'll start off with Nia Nal. Now, Nia Nal was actually confirmed to, basically, they've been hinting for a while now about her super, you know, superhero powers as she is the uh, great, 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 great grandmother of Dreamer, who is, of course, a member of the Legion of Superheroes. They have been teasing her powers for a little while now, and in this, they basically confirmed that she has this uh, disorder that basically causes her to fall asleep all the time. Uh, but I believe this is a deception. I feel like this is actually something that Nia knows about, and she knows that she actually has these powers. Now... Obviously, she could not know. She could be completely alien to this. And in that case, you know, when these powers do unveil themselves, she will be shocked. However, I feel like this is... I think she's playing coy here. And I think she's very much aware what's going on. And she just doesn't quite know how to handle it and how to deal with it. But obviously, obviously, this is something that is going to come up later on. We know she's going to evolve into this character. So we just need to wait and see when that eventually happens. I believe that... I might be wrong here, but I believe there is an episode coming up where uh, a few of the characters get stuck in her dream. I don't quite know if that's true, so don't quote me on that. Um, I think that's just something I heard in, you know, heard it, uh, heard through the grapevine. But I think this is still a really awesome character. I have been loving Naya this season. I think she's really good, a great addition to the show. And I'm definitely excited to see where she goes with these potential dreamer storylines. Also, I have to say Brainiac 5, once again, continues to be an absolute legend on this show. Um, just his fight scene alone in this episode, like Brainiac 5 actually gets a fight scene in this episode, and it might be one of my favorite fights in the history of Supergirl. You have this operatic music playing, he's got his hands behind his back the entire time, just avoiding all these shots, he's walking on walls, it's just, you know, it's, it's just so perfectly Brainiac 5, like it's so, you know, it's just brainy summed up, and it's just, it's such a good fight, it's so entertaining, it took me completely by surprise, I didn't expect it at all, and I thought it was an absolutely brilliant way to do it, because, you know, the way Brainy's going about it, he's going around trying to find all these things that are being sprayed on the buildings to be to like mark them as, a, as attacking spots and then you have a group of uh, agent of liberty guys who come up and try and attack him and i thought oh someone's gonna have to come and save him but he doesn't he completely handles himself and i thought that was great uh, it was nice to see that brainy isn't going to turn into that kind of damsel in distress type character which i feared he would do you know given the fact that he's the tech guy who kind of went into the field and then he was in trouble but he was actually able to handle himself and i like that i thought that was good and just everything to do with brainy not only this episode but just this season i'm loving i think you know jesse rath such a good actor such a comedic presence i love him on this show and i loved him in this episode also i have to say i'm really happy that james is actually getting a storyline this season because they're actually doing something with him while it's not necessarily to do with guardian directly they are definitely hint hinting at him you know kind of joining up with the uh, agent of liberty you know with the children of liberty and things like that and i'll get onto those in a little bit um but obviously I think that James actually being able to get involved with the Children of Liberty, trying to get in with Benjamin Lockwood, is something that's interesting for him. Obviously, this is causing some conflict between him and Lena because Lena doesn't want him to do that. Uh, she feels, you know, it's dangerous. Also, Kara is kind of on the same side um, as Lena at this point. Uh, but we see that, you know, James is just like, look, this is the job. I'm, this is, you know, purely for work. And obviously, next episode, they are kind of hinting that maybe James is getting subjected to all of this stuff, and maybe he might be switching sides, although I personally feel like that's a complete misconception on the trailer's part. I feel like, you know, James is just doing this. He, you know, he's probably just posing, you know, a facade so that everyone believes him, like Oliver Queen did in Season 3 with the League of Assassins. I think it's going to be just like that. So, you know, I, I'm really happy that James is actually getting to do something this season. I was really worried that this season was just going to go by, you know, another season where James is just a bystanding character. But I'm really super happy with this. I really like what they're doing with James. I, you know, I love Mechar Brooks. I think he's a great actor. I love seeing him in this show. And especially the fact now that he has a story. I think that's just so good for him and for Mechar Brooks. Now, of course, all the Agent Liberty stuff continues to go on, and obviously Sam Witwer continues to be a great character on this show. He's just an awesome character actor, and I love him as Ben Lockwood. Now, I really like the scene between him and Kara on this live sort of TV um, uh, kind of, you know, debate show that they have. Um, I really love the shot as well when Kara shows up on the set and Ben just turns around with that big devilish smile. Um, he's just like this really good smile on him. He looks, he looks great. And I love the fact that he's just, you know, being this very menacing presence. Even, you know, he is just like a pretty, you know, average looking guy. 
you know, he's very much got this presence to him, and I like that a lot. Very much like Adrian Chase on Arrow. He just has, like, even though he's very average looking, he just has this presence. And I think that's really, you know, something quite uh, sophisticated to pull off. And I think that Sam Witwer does it very, very well. And just their debate in general, like, you know, Sam Witwer bring up, <laughs> Ben Lockwood brings up quite a lot of good points. Um, you know, talking about what Thanksgiving is truly about. You know, Carr is going on about how it's all about giving, things like that. And then Ben will bring up the reason of, like, what it was actually about you know, and how everything kind of forgets the origin of Thanksgiving and things like that and links it to what's going on in the present. I thought that was actually a really good way to do it. That didn't feel forceful. I enjoyed all that. And Ben Lockwood continues to be great. And the Children of Liberty growing, I actually love this because I think this is a really awesome element to bring up like this gang warfare because Supergirl hasn't really done anything like this. Like Supergirl season four has been posed as like the grounded season of Supergirl. Like they're trying to do it grounded this season. And this is clearly what I think they mean is by doing like a really grounded villain like this, you know, having like this guy who's bringing up like this cult of people. And they tried to do the cult last season. Like they tried to do a cult of somewhere like the cult of Supergirl last season, but it didn't really work. This is much better, the Cult of Agent Liberty, like the Children of Liberty, you know, the way they're going around doing these orders, especially because it's a, you know, it's a true 50-50 split in terms of people in National City, people who do like the aliens, people who don't, and, you know, people who don't like them will join up with the Children of Liberty. I think it's a really good way of doing it, and like I say, I love their execution, I think they're great, the way they're going around, marking these buildings, attacking them, thought it was awesome. However, I do have to bring up an extremely big negative uh, for this episode, as when the Children of Liberty are going around marking all these houses and things, we do see them basically try and attack this guy and his daughter in his house, and the daughter lets out this, what I, thought, I assume is a Komodo dragon, and it turns into an actual physical dragon, and, you know, just starts terrorizing the city. I mean, this is where the episode lost me. <laughs> um... Like I say, for the episode overall, I've been quite positive this week. I was actually enjoying this episode until the dragon showed up. This was just ridiculous. So over the top, not necessary whatsoever, especially because this episode felt so grounded. Like, this episode barely had any Supergirl in it at all. And when I say Supergirl, I mean actually Supergirl as a Persona. Kara was in this episode, but not Supergirl. And I thought, this is actually a really grounded episode, and I'm liking it. I'm liking this vibe. I'm liking this tone. And then the dragon showed up, and it was just, it was so ridiculous, not necessary. I really thought it was just overblown just so they could show off the CGI budget. It's like, why couldn't you have saved that CGI budget for something a bit better? Especially because we are getting Red Kara later on. Should you not save it for that instead of wasting it on this? It had no bearing on the story. It meant nothing. It was just so we could have a fight at the end. Why do we always have to have a fight scene? It's just, you know, you don't always have to have a fight scene. Like, look at episode 3 of this season, which I consider to be the best episode of Supergirl. That had no fight scenes in it. And that was, like I say, I think that's the best episode of Supergirl. So why do you have to constantly persist that you need fight scenes because this was not only irrelevant but just so pointless and i really hated every minute of it other than that though i think this was a pretty decent episode of supergirl once again this season appears to be getting better and better i'm definitely interested in next episode as well in terms of what they're doing with james it seems to be a very james focused episode which is good i like the fact that they're finally giving him a story i'm loving naya loving brainy love agent liberty i think agent liberty is a spectacular villain i'm loving him so, you know, this season it is improving, it is getting better, still not great, but it is getting better, uh, and this episode was definitely a step towards that, despite the dragon, which, you know, granted, given the fact it was so irrelevant, I can look past it, I think that this episode is still a good step forward for the season going forward. But what did you guys think about this episode? Make sure you let me know all your thoughts about Call to Action in the comment section down below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think of the dragon? Make sure you let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. So thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please give it a like, it'll help me out a lot, and share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves DC TV and get them to join the community. And as always guys, please subscribe for your latest content on Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow, and with all that said guys, hope to see you again in my next video.